Hi, this is Shannon from No Shelf Control. Thanks for joining me again today. I have a haul of books to share with you. I won two from Goodreads giveaways and got two from NetGalley that I'm very excited about and they have all just arrived. So I'm looking forward to telling you more about them. Let's start with the one that actually came in the mail. So this is a paperback copy of Last House Before the Mountain by Monica Helfer. This one is 175 pages, so it's a thin little. Last House Before the Mountain is not a long book, and um, it was published in 2020, published in Germany um, as De Baggage. So there you have it. First published in Germany as De Baggage, The Last House Before the Mountain. I don't know why that strikes me as funny, but it does. And published in the United States in 2023. So this has just come out here in the States. So let me tell you a little bit about it. It says, for readers of Ian McEwan, Elena Ferrante, and Julie Oranger, the spellbinding, internationally best-selling, multi-generational family saga, you know those are my key words, set in a fractured rural village in World War I, Austria. Joseph and Maria live with their children on the edge of a valley in westernmost Austria, far from the local residents who scorn the family, though no one can quite pinpoint the source of the grudge. Perhaps the answer lies in Maria's unseemly beauty, her dark hair and clean white clothes, and in her rugged husband's stern, illegible face. Even the children seem God-forsaken, yet impervious, needing no one outside their tribe. When the First World War breaks out, Joseph is drafted into the army for what he expects to be a short time, reluctantly leaving Maria and the children under the protection of the village's self-aggrandizing, lascivious mayor. Maria gives birth to her fifth child, Marguerite, while Joseph is away at the front. Joseph returns, but he will never speak a word to little Greta. Interesting. So, for readers of Ian McEwan, Elena Ferrante, and Julie Oranger. Very interesting. Last House Before the Mountain by Monica Helfer. The next one is another Goodreads giveaway um, that I won in ebook form. So this is an e-arc and it's called When I First Held You by Anstey Harris, um, published January 24th of this year. So just, a, you know, a couple of weeks ago, it is 313 pages. And I had started reading this a couple of weeks ago and then won it. Um, I had started reading it at my library. So just by coincidence, happened to win it. So I'm very excited about that. So I'm very excited about that. Two things I wanna say, this cover is beautiful. Love the like gold that goes through it. Really beautiful and really pretty blues. So I love the cover. Good job with that. And here's a little bit about the book. Silence tore them apart. Can the truth bring them back together? In 1960s Glasgow, anti-nuclear activists, Judith and Jimmy fall in love, but their future hopes are dashed when their protesters squat is raided and many, including Jimmy, are sent to prison. Pregnant and with no word from Jimmy, Judith is forced to enter an unmarried mother's home, give up their baby and learn to live with her grief. More than half a century later, Judith's mending shop restores broken treasures just as Judith herself has been bound back together by her late, much-missed partner, Catherine. But her tranquility is shattered when Jimmy, so different and yet somehow the same, reappears yearning to unpick the painful past. Realizing they each know only half of the other's story, Jimmy and Judith finally break the silence that tore apart what might have been their family. Amid heartbreak and hope, how much can now be mended? And as I said, I've read maybe the first chapter, chapter and a half of this book, and there are no spoilers in there. That's really what you come to know in the first chapter, chapter and a half. So I have no idea what's going to happen, and I'm very excited to find out. So Jimmy and Judith. Uh, Judith's Mending Shop is very interesting. It's a... Um, it almost reminds me of a Goodwill where people go to work who need work, but it's all, everything is free. And the only thing that people bring there um, are things that need to be mended or repurposed. And they can either help with repurposing them and mending them, or they can hand them off to people who will. And then you can go there to acquire things that have been repurposed and mended 
um, at Judith's Mending Shop. So I just thought that was a really cool, like, I don't know if that actually exists, if there are places that really do that. If you know about that, tell me. Um, let me know in the comments. I would love to know if there are places that just specialize in sort of recycling used goods, making something new out of them and then giving them away. I thought that was really cool. Okay, so that is When I First Held You by Anstey Harris. And I think it's Anstey, it's A-N-S-T-E-Y. It could be Anstey, but I'm going with Anstey Harris. You know about me and the names. Okay, so the next one is a NetGalley um, e-arc that I won, and it is called Daddy Stories by Emma Klein. Now I have to admit, I hate this cover. I don't know why she decided to go with a gold cover with blue letters and that's all. Maybe I'll figure it out when I get into the book, but I really hate the cover. So sorry, Emma Klein, but the cover's not my thing. Um, this one is published in September of 2020. It's 288 pages. Um, and for some reason they're sending out eARCs now so that's interesting. It's like maybe it's being re-released. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but eARCs are going out now um, through NetGalley, so something's up with this book. Um, here is a description of Daddy by Emma Klein. Now, also, sorry, um, you have to remember, Emma Klein published The Girls, or wrote The Girls, um, which I really liked. That was a four-star read for me. That's the one um, where the young women in the 60s become part of a cult. Um, and I thought it was well written. I believe that was her debut. So um, we'll see about this one. All right, so Emma Klein's Daddy. The stories in Emma Klein's stunning first collection consider the dark corners of human experience, exploring the fault lines of power between men and women, parents and children, past and present. A man travels to his son's school to deal with the fallout of a violent attack and to make sure his son will not lose his college place. But what exactly has his son done and who is to blame? A young woman trying to make it in LA, working in a clothes shop while taking acting classes, turns to a riskier way of making money, but will be forced to confront the danger of the game she's playing. And a family coming together for Christmas struggle to skate over the lingering darkness caused by the very ordinary brutality of a troubled husband and father. These outstanding stories examine masculinity, male power and broken relationships while revealing with astonishing insight and clarity those moments of misunderstanding that can have life-changing consequences. Interesting. So maybe this is, actu this is actually her debut or maybe this is just her first short story collection. I'm not sure, I can't tell. That first line says, in Emma Klein's stunning first collection. I thought the girls was her debut, but maybe not. So, but the um, three, plot lines that they talk about for the stories there are very interesting. So I'm uh, interested in digging in for two reasons, not the cover, um, but because I loved the girls and because those plot lines sound very interesting to me. And the last e-arc that I got from NetGalley that I wanna talk about today is With My Little Eye by Jocelyn Jackson. Now, I got the opportunity to meet Jackson in New Orleans several years ago, and she is darling, just so friendly, um, incredibly well-spoken, just makes you incredibly comfortable, loved hearing about her books, um, loved hearing about her writing process and, and just who she is. Um, so I would read pretty much anything she put out just because she was such an adorable human. And um, I really loved having the opportunity to get to meet her and get to know her a little bit. Um, that was at the Southern Business Booksellers Conference. I don't know, I, I can't remember what the letters are, but it's Southern Bookseller, Independent Booksellers Conference, I think, S-B-I-C, maybe. Um, and that was in New Orleans before COVID. Um, and I got to go, I went to see Ann Bogle, who is a podcaster um, from What Should I Read Next and a celebrated author. Um, I went to meet her and some other women and got to meet Jocelyn Jackson when I was there. So let's talk a little bit about With My Little Eye. Did I tell you when it was published. Okay, so it is coming out April 25th of 2023, and it is 336 pages. I'm a little scattered today. This is a bit of a scattered video, but we're gonna go with it. All right, so let's talk about With My Little Eye. 
From the New York Times bestselling author of Never Have I Ever comes the hair-raising story of a mother who moves herself and her daughter across the country to lose a dangerous stalker, only to discover that it will take more than distance to escape him. It started with the letters. For actress Maribel Mills, disturbing fan mail, fan mail is part of the price of fame. So when she starts getting creepy letters written in fruit-scented marker, she is mostly unfazed and diligently files them along with her other messages from unhinged fans. After all, she's a single mom approaching 40, not the kind of hot young celeb who sparks dangerous obsessions. But there's something different about Marker Man. He's been in her home. Maribel's sheets smell of unfamiliar cologne and objects have gone missing around the house. Plus, the letters have become more perverse with drawings of a naked Maribel tied up or chopped into pieces. While the police insist that stalkers hardly ever escalate to violence, Maribel has played the dead girl one too many times on TV to risk becoming her in real life. So my recollection of Jocelyn Jackson's books is that there are two different kinds. One is sort of a mystery thriller, psycho um, thriller kind of book like this. And the other is more of a family saga, traveling sisters, Thelma and Louise kind of um, book that I've read as well. I, maybe it's called Almost Sisters is the one that I've read. Um, but she does both, and my impression is that she does them both equally well. So this one is a little creepy, um, but not horror, so I will read it, um, and I'm excited about it. So I'm, uh, we've got a, an actress with a stalker who is trying to escape becoming his next victim. So, all right, so those are the four books that I have recently acquired in my haul here uh, in the past couple of weeks. Two from NetGalley, two from Goodreads Giveaways. Um, would love to tell you more about more books that come up on my radar. So I will be uh, back soon with another video. I hope you'll watch. If you enjoyed this one, please like and subscribe and I will see you soon. Thank you for watching Thanks. No Shelf Control The Shannon. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Take it off the shelf and let's get into it.